Do you want to learn how to stream on kick? This will likely be the easiest video you'll find because I'm going to hold your hand step by step every part of the way. So if that sounds good to you, drop a like on this video to make it easier for other people to find. But let's get started. The first step should be pretty obvious, but head over to kick.com and make an account by signing up and logging in. This is my kick page right here, which if you ever have any kick related questions, you can ask me live every Monday over on kick. And if you're wondering how how to customize your kick channel and make it look all nice with the panels, the bio, the banners and everything. I'll be teaching you that later in this playlist. The next thing that we need is a streaming software and we'll be using OBS Studio in this video. And this is going to be where we're gonna control everything about our stream. So designing our stream, our audio, our gameplay, everything is gonna be controlled through this software. So click on whichever system you use and then you'll download the program and then install it and run it. Once you've installed OBS Studio, you'll be greeted with this discussion disgustingly gray, bleak program. And if you're wondering how all the streamers design their streams and make it look super nice and professional, a lot of them use this website, which I'll leave linked down below, which they have alerts, panels, banners, emotes, badges, everything you're gonna need. And lucky for us, they sponsor today's video, so nice. But my favorite thing about their website is honestly their stream design bestseller packages, like the dark mode series. And if you click on the left-hand side, about four down and make it full screen, you can see everything that's included in this package, like anime, webcam overlays, alerts, banners, starting soon screens, everything you're going to possibly want in one nice cohesive package. So if you want to make your stream look extra professional, I'll leave a link down below this video and you can use coupon code CPAUSE for 50% off your purchase. But going back to this disgusting looking program, let me explain what you're looking at. This black rectangle right here is what your viewers are going to see when you go live. So this is where we're going to design our actual stream. The bottom left corner, we have something called scenes, which are basically just different collections of sources. And a source is if we click this plus button right here is anything from adding an image, your game capture, your webcam, some text on the screen, Basically anything that you're gonna put on your screen is gonna be a source. And then a scene is gonna be a collection of sources. So for example, if we right click this scene right here, we can rename it and we'll just call it just chatting. So we'll have this scene just be just chatting. I think I just said just too many times. But if we wanna make another scene, like a gameplay scene, we'll hit the plus button. We'll call this one gameplay, hit okay. And you'll be able to add more if you want, like a starting soon scene and so on and so forth. But we'll just start with just chatting and gameplay because that's pretty much all you need. So we'll start with the just chatting scene. So I'm gonna click on that. And then next to these two boxes, we have the audio mixer, which when we add our audio sources, like our game desktop volume and our microphone, we'll be able to adjust the volume and see the levels here. Next to that, we have scene transitions, which I will explain later and the controls tab, which has everything here. And I will explain that later as well, not to get you guys a little bit too confused too early. Sound good? But well, let's start with the fun stuff because this is getting boring already. So we're gonna start designing a just chatting scene. So we're gonna have just chatting, click on that. And then we're gonna go to our sources and we're gonna click on add source, this little plus button. So we're gonna click that and let's add a webcam because it's just chatting. So just chatting typically consists of your webcam, which is basically full screen and the chat on the screen. So we'll start with our webcam by clicking video capture device, and then we're gonna rename this webcam and then hit okay. Now it's gonna start loading all of your different webcams like this brutally awful looking integrated webcam for my laptop, so we're not gonna use that. But instead, I'm gonna use my other webcam, which is the Insta360 Link. I have two of them, so I hope that this is the right one. Fingers crossed, and it's not, son of a b So it's gotta be the other one, so I'm gonna click that, give it a second to load. Boom, we got our webcam looking nice and crisp. And if you wanna know how to make your webcam look absolutely amazing, it's later in this playlist as well, so don't worry about it. It. We're gonna start simple though. So once we have our webcam added, we're gonna hit okay. And now we have our webcam right here, fantastic. And then next we wanna add our chat over the screen. So in order to accomplish that, we gotta go over to our browser. We're gonna be using this free tool called Botrix, which I'll also leave linked down below. And you might notice that you cannot log in directly with Kick, but that's okay. You're gonna log in with a Twitch account or a YouTube account or a Discord account just literally any account that you have of these four, 
because we're gonna add our kick account after. And if you don't have any of these accounts, then what are you living under a rock? Then go ahead and just make an account just so you can log in. Dumb, I know, but this is how it works. So I'm gonna log in with my Twitch account. Then once you've logged in with any of those options, you're gonna go on the left-hand side and make sure you're under your, the profile tab. So click on profile tab and it will bring you right here to all your platforms. Now you'll see that we have a sign in with kick option. So I'm just gonna click sign in with kick. We're gonna type in our kick username. So for my burner account, it's just C pause. However, if you guys have a space in your name, just like a normal space, I believe you might want to put an underscore instead of that space. Luckily, I don't have a space in my name, so I'm just gonna leave it as is and click accept. Now we need to give the mod role to Botrix to be able to access our kick chat. So what we're gonna do is hit continue and it's gonna pop up our kick page and it's gonna bring us directly to our moderators section over on kick. And if you don't know how to get here, all you have to do is make sure you're logged in with your kick channel, go to the top right corner and then click on creator dashboard. And then you're gonna to go to the left-hand side and you're gonna find what it is moderators right there. And then you're gonna click add new at the top. And then I'm going to type in Botrix and it's gonna be the one with the green check mark and the capital B and the capital R. So I'm gonna click that and then I'm gonna click add. And now we've added Botrix as a moderator to our chat so we can now access our chat. So let's go back to Botrix. Now you can see this screen right here. And so we have to go and copy this. So we're gonna highlight it. Oh, please come on, just highlight it one time for me. Why are you not gonna, please, why are you doing this? I have no idea why this is giving me such a hard time. So I'm just gonna literally highlight it and not let go of the click and then hit control C to copy it. And now we're gonna, instead of hitting this finish button, don't hit that, we're gonna go to this link right here. And if you messed up and you did that, then just go to this link, which is kick.com forward slash Botrix. So just type that in your browser or in this case, click it. It's going to put us in Botrix's chat room. What we're going to do is click on this little box right here. And then I'm going to control V or right click paste. And then once you have this in here, we're going to hit enter. It's going to send our chat and we just got to wait for the Botrix bot to say your account has successfully linked. Fantastic. Now this part is done, so we're gonna go back to Botrix, and then now you can hit this finish button. So we're gonna hit finish, and now you can see that our kick account is now connected under our profile tab. However, if you look in the top left corner where it says platform, it says Twitch. That's because we have Twitch selected as our primary platform right now, and we can change that by hitting this green settings button right here for kick. So I'm gonna click that. It's gonna change the platform to kick, so that's great. But now we can go over to the widgets tab in the top left corner. So we're going to click that and then we're going to click on the chat little icon right here. So we're going to click on chat. Now you can see we have a bunch of different options like Twitch, YouTube and kick. This is if you want to do multi chat. So if you're multi streaming, then you'll be able to activate these right now. We're just using it for kick. So what I'm going to do is disable Twitch and disable YouTube. You'll be able to customize all of this stuff here, like the font size. If you want to show the platform icon, if you want to change the design to a different design to make it look nicer or different, you can do all of that stuff here. But once you've designed it to how you want it to look on your stream, then you're going to click this copy button next to widget URL. Don't show this to anybody, by the way. Otherwise, they'll be able to use your chat on their streams. I don't know why the heck they'd want to do that. That sounds dumb AF, but just just don't show it to people, all right? So hit the copy button right here and we're gonna go back to OBS. Now we're gonna go into our sources tab. We're gonna add a new source with this plus button. And this time we're gonna add a browser option. So I'm gonna call this one chat and then I'm gonna hit okay. And now we're gonna paste this URL that we just copied into over here in this little URL section. I don't know why I'm talking funny, so please ignore that. So once we pasted this in, we're gonna simply hit OK. And now we have this nice red box here, which isn't showing anything. So we need to type some chat messages in. So let's go over to kick real quick. That kind of rhymed, I like that. So we're gonna go to our kick chat. And if you don't know how to do that, go to the top right corner and then click on channel. I'm gonna put you here. You'll hit this little chat option, which will pop out your chat. We're gonna send a couple messages. I'm gonna say testing, and then I'm just type a bunch of garbage. And that looks good to me. So let's go back over to OBS. And would you look at that? We got our kick chat on the screen, which if you want to move it, you can feel free to move it by clicking on it and dragging it. But I just noticed that I set it to disappear. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to go and change that. So I'm going to go back to Botrix. This is a good time to mention that if you make any changes to your chat box, you're going to have to recopy that widget URL. So in this case, hide old messages is enabled, which I don't want to be enabled. So I'm going to disable that. 
Now I'm gonna copy this new widget URL and paste it back in OBS. So if I wanna edit a source, all I have to do is double click on it in the sources tab. And now I'm going to paste the new URL, hit okay. And now when I send messages, they'll stay on the screen. But let me show you how to add KickChat inside OBS so you can talk back to your viewers without leaving OBS. So we need to go back over to Kick real quick. So this time you wanna go to your Kick channel and then go to your chat box and we're gonna click this little settings button, the little gear icon, so click that. And then we're gonna click on pop out chat right here. So we're gonna click pop out chat. Then it's gonna give you this URL right here. We're gonna double click on that, copy the whole URL so I'm gonna control C and copy that bad boy. And we're gonna paste that over in OBS. But this time we're gonna to go to the top of OBS where it says docs. And then we're going to do custom browser docs. Click on that. We're gonna call this one kick chat. And we're gonna paste the URL in with control V, which is gonna have our little chat URL and click apply. This is now our kick chat box, which you would see over on kick. So you can take the top and you can drag it over to the side of OBS and pop it in. If you're having troubles popping it in, then all you have to do is just double click the top of it and it should snap right in. However, you might notice that if you go to send a message and actually like type stuff in, it's gonna make you log in. So go ahead and log in to your Kick account in this little browser thing so that way you can actually send messages. By the way, if you're not able to log in or for whatever reason it's too zoomed in for you to be able to log into your device, all you have to do is right click anywhere on it and then you can either zoom in or zoom out. So I know that's been causing some people issues so that's a quick fix for that. Now once you're logged in, you can go and just send whatever messages you want and it works perfectly. And so I'm gonna close this so it's not in our way anymore because that's annoying. And now you can see our messages are showing on the side of OBS so we can chat to people and it's also showing on our screen. Now, for example, if we wanted to type out a very long message like this, and we don't want it to be this long, then what we can do is double click the chat source again, and we can change the height and width with these numbers. So I'm probably gonna do 500 for the width instead, and then hit okay. And that way it reshapes the size of the chat box. You can also feel free to change the size using the corners like this, and just kind of move it to wherever you want. Though, once you find the spot that you want it to, I'd recommend locking it with this little lock button. So I'm gonna lock both my webcam and the chat. So that way, if I'm like clicking around and dicking around or whatever, then I'm not gonna accidentally move it while I'm live. So I have these two locked now. So this is a pretty basic just chatting scene. We got our webcam, we got our chat on the screen, and we got our chat box in OBS. So let's make a quick gameplay scene. So we're gonna go and switch scenes to our gameplay scene. As you can see, it faded there, and that's where the scene transitions comes into play. So if you wanted to instead fade and do a cut, like a direct cut, you'll change that to cut. We'll click on just chatting again and boom, it's just a quick cut. But if you want it to fade, you'll change it to fade. You can change how long it lasts over here, boys. And then you can click on gameplay and it'll do exactly that. So let's build out our gameplay scene. The first thing we need to do is obviously boot up a game. So let's go over to Steam and just boot up a random game. So I've booted up everyone's favorite game, Hollow Knight. And now that we have our game on our screen, let's go back to OBS. If you have two monitors, that's fantastic because you can just have OBS on the side. But if you only have one monitor, it's going to be a pain in the butt. So what you're going to have to do is hold Alt and then hit Tab and you'll be able to Alt Tab into your OBS back again. So now that our game is booted up, what we're gonna do is add a new source. So we're gonna click plus button under source. Then we're gonna click game capture or display capture or window capture because those three are three different options and I'll go over each of them in case one of them doesn't work. So the first option is game capture. So we'll just leave it as game capture because it's pretty freaking obvious, like what the heck else is it? Click okay. And then now we're gonna have the mode that we can change. So. Right now it's capture any full screen application, which right now it is not capturing. So what you can do is click and then do capture specific window, select the window, which in this case is going to be Hollow Knight. Give it a second to load and boom, we got our game capture on the screen. Now, if you're having problems with this, then what you can do is go back to any full screen application and then go into Hollow Knight so what I'm gonna do is I hit okay, go back to Hollow Knight. And if you're having troubles capturing your game, I recommend going to the in-game settings. So I'm gonna go to options, I'm gonna go to video. And if you have the option, you should try playing in borderless or borderless full screen, borderless windowed, whatever. Usually borderless windowed is the best. Or if you're really having options, just play it in windowed mode like so, and you'll be able to capture it a lot better. So I have full screen, 
Full screen has been known to cause some issues, but let's see if this works. As you can see, full screen is working for me on the any full screen application, which is cool because then we don't have to go and redo this every time we play a new game. For example, if we use capture specific window, obviously if you're playing, let's say Call of Duty, it's gonna look for the Hollow Knight window and it's not Hollow Knight, it's Call of Duty. So you're gonna have to go in and change this again. It's really up to you and sometimes they might give you issues like this and every setup's gonna be different. But let's go with a different option in case you don't wanna use game capture. So I'm just gonna click on the game capture source. I'm gonna press the delete key and then I'm gonna delete this and we're gonna try using a display capture. So I'm gonna click on display capture We'll leave it as display capture, hit OK, and you'll see that it captures our entire screen. However, this is my second monitor, so I have to change that. So I go to display, and then I'm gonna change it to my first monitor, which is the primary, and then you can see what I'd like to describe as hell. It's just a capture inside a capture inside a capture inside a capture, because I'm capturing my own screen, which is capturing that screen, so on and so forth. So yeah, display capture is great, because that way it literally just captures everything on your screen, but that being said, if you have some sensitive information on your screen, you might not want to use this. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about when I say sensitive information, so don't act coy. So display capture is a really great capture method as well, but if it doesn't work for you or you just don't want to use it, we're gonna delete it and we're gonna add a window capture as our last option. So I'm gonna click window capture, okay, and you'll be able to do the same thing you did pretty much with the game capture. So we'll go to window, We'll go to, why is it not showing up? That's right, where we have to go back to Hollow Knight and change it back to borderless or windowed because right now it's in full screen mode. So we'll go to Hollow Knight, full screen off. We're gonna do borderless, that's fine. Go back to OBS. Now we're gonna click on the window tab and we have to refresh it. So I'm gonna cancel, double click on window capture. We have Hollow Knight tab right here, except what the heck, it's not capturing Hollow Knight. Well, that's because sometimes you have to go to capture method right here, change it from automatic to Windows 10 and up. Why you have to do that? I don't know, what do I look like, a freaking nerd to you? So you have those three options at your disposal. So once you find the one that you like, you can hit okay and you're good to go. So obviously we have our gameplay, but now we wanna add our webcam, right? You don't have to add a webcam, but a lot of people like having a webcam, including myself, since it helps you build a relationship with your audience a lot easier since they can see your emotions and see what the heck you actually look like. So I'm gonna add a freaking webcam. So we're gonna add a webcam by adding a new source. So plus button, then we're gonna do video capture device, but the cool thing is, since we've already added a webcam before, we can click add existing here. We're gonna select webcam and then hit okay. Now this webcam is simply too freaking big. So what we're gonna do is drag the corner down to how we want it, probably right around here. And that looks pretty good. Now, if you wanna crop your webcam because you think it's too long, which being too long has never really been a problem. But what you can do is hold the alt key down on your keyboard and then drag the sides and you can crop it. But for this instance, I'm gonna leave it how it was before. So I'm gonna hit Control Z or Z if you're Canadian and then Control Z again, and it's gonna undo everything I did. And now if you remember, we talked about owned and like how they had all that cool stuff. I'm gonna use one of their webcam overlays in case you guys bought anything earlier. And if you didn't buy anything earlier, that's totally fine. Or if you wanna buy something now, it's down in the description below, but just see how this works so you can understand how to do it in the future. So if I wanna add a webcam overlay, which I do, I'm gonna click add new source. If you're adding a static webcam overlay because it doesn't move, you're gonna add an image but I'm using an animated webcam overlay, so I'm gonna add a media source. So I'm just gonna call this webcam overlay, and then I'm gonna hit okay. And now I'm gonna hit the loop button because I want it to loop. And now we have to find that file. So I got the dark mode series package from owned earlier, so I'm gonna browse for it by clicking the browse button. I got the package right here, so I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna go to files. You can see it literally came with everything like Twitch profile, YouTube banner, intermission, starting soon, panels animated alert sounds, all that jazz. But I just want the animated overlay for the webcam right now. So I'm gonna go to that folder. And I'm gonna choose this really minimalistic one because it gave us a bunch of options, but I'm gonna go with the minimalistic one and then I'm gonna hit open. It's gonna open it even if it doesn't show it, but that's fine because as soon as we hit okay, it's gonna pop it on the screen right here. Now, this is a black webcam overlay over like a black game, which is uh, pretty hard to match up. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it more in the middle to make it easier to see. And this is a good time to tell you about how things work for the sources list. The webcam overlay is above the webcam. You can see that it goes over the webcam. It'll be easier to show for the webcam and the background. The webcam is above the window capture, right? But if I drag the webcam below the window capture, it hides behind it. 
So you wanna make sure that you have your source list set up appropriately, otherwise it's not gonna work. So for example, the webcam overlay is supposed to go over the webcam because webcam overlay makes sense, right? If it doesn't make sense, then I don't know what to tell you, but you can go ahead and just make sure the webcam overlay is above the webcam, so on and so forth. So what I'm gonna do is drag the corner of this overlay and just kind of match it up to my webcam, which is looking pretty good. And you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to do micro movements to get it just how you want. That looks pretty good to me. And if you notice, if I go and drag something, it's not gonna drag both and that sucks. So I'm gonna hit Control Z, line that back up. And what we're gonna do is right click on a blank section of the sources and I'm going to hit add and we're going to do group, which is gonna be basically a folder. So I'm just gonna have this webcam folder, I guess you could say, and then hit okay. So I'm going to drag both of these, so I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna highlight the other one by holding shift and clicking that to highlight both. I'm gonna drag these guys into the webcam folder like so and have make sure that the webcam overlay is still above the webcam. It's looking good. But this way, now, instead of like moving them individually, we can click on the webcam folder and it'll move them both at the same time. So that way you don't have to worry about it. Then you can just put it on the screen wherever your little heart desires like so. And it looks clean right there. I dig it, I'm gonna put it right there, that's fine. So now we have our webcam, we got the game, and let's add our chat because we have already done it before, so it's gonna be easy to reset up. So I'm gonna add a browser source, same thing, we're gonna add existing, add chat, okay. Boom, we got our kick chat, let's just put it over here on the screen, I think that looks fine. So we got our just chatting scene, which we can switch to by clicking that, and then we have our gameplay scene. And that's a pretty basic setup for streaming. So now we have the nitty gritty, the not fun part, the settings, which are very important. And if you skip a step in the settings, then you're gonna screw yourself. So please don't skip around. I'll try and make it as easy as possible and explain it in words that literally your mom can understand. Grab a drink, take a breather, and let's head into the settings. So go to the bottom right corner where it says settings, click settings, and we're gonna start with the general tab. The general tab has a bunch of stuff that's basically just quality of life stuff, so you really don't have to do anything here. Though, if you wanna change it up from looking dark and depressing, you can change the theme to my personal favorite, and I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Rockney? Ratchney? I think Ratchney, because it sounds ratchet. Has anyone even said ratchet in the past like 10 years? I digress. So you can change the theme to make it look a little bit nicer, and that's pretty much all you'd want to do right here. You can also change some of this stuff here, like having a confirmation dialogue when your stream starts, but it's really up to you. So once you've changed everything you wanted to change here, we're gonna hit apply and move on to the stream tab. Now you might be freaking out here, and that's okay, I did too, but all you have to do is click on service, and we're gonna do a custom service because Kick doesn't have their own category yet at the recording of this video. So I'm gonna hit custom. And then we gotta head over to Kick to get our server and stream key, all right? So let's head over to Kick. So in order to find this sensitive information, we're gonna go to the top right corner, click on our little guy, and then go to the settings tab. Then from here, we're gonna go click on the stream key tab on the side. And then we have our stream URL and our stream key. Do not show your stream key to literally anybody because they will be able to hijack your Kickstream and stream whatever they want, whenever they want. So do not show anyone your stream key. But first we're gonna copy the stream URL by clicking this convenient little copy button there. Go and paste it in OBS. Click on server and then control V, go back to kick. Then we're gonna click this little copy button right here and copy our stream key. So we're gonna go back to OBS and we're gonna paste in our stream key with control V and there we go, we're good to go. So now when we hit apply, our stream key is now connected to kick, which is a good thing. And if you run into issues later, I'm gonna circle back on that later. So make sure to stay tuned for that. So now we're gonna move to the output tab, which is arguably everyone's least favorite tab. And I understand why, but it is probably the most important tab. So please pay attention. So first off, you're gonna change your output mode from simple to advanced, and you'll be able to see everything that I see. So we're gonna start with streaming settings and you can see we have our streaming settings audio track set to one. Basically any audio track that we decide to send to audio track one will be sent to our kick stream. Makes sense, right? For the audio encoder, this is fine, but the video encoder is probably the most important thing to worry about because if your stream starts and then ends and then starts and ends and starts and ends and just freaks out, chances are you probably picked the wrong video encoder. Now, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, chances are you will have NVIDIA NVEC H.264 like this one right here. And I'd recommend choosing that. However, if you don't have that, 
you'll likely be using X264, but if you have a bunch of different options like this, you might wanna go to your friend Google and Google to see which encoder is gonna be the best for you because everyone's computer is different and everyone has a different graphics card. So just wanna make sure that you're using the right encoder for your setup. So if you're using NVIDIA NVEC H.264, I'll go over that first. And if you don't have that, I'll go over X264 after, so sit tight. So we're gonna do NVIDIA NVEC H.264, and then we're gonna go down to the encoder settings, which we can, why did it scroll and mess that up? There we go. I'm gonna choose my rate control to be CBR, and Kick has a bitrate cap of 8,000 kilobits per second. So if you wanna stream at 8,000 kilobits per second, by all means, but the bit rate is basically going to depend on what internet speed that you have. So if you have a really good internet speed, you can chance it at 8,000 kilobits per second to give you the best quality for kick servers. But what I like to stream at is 6,000 kilobits per second because I feel like that's a good median and good average for a lot of people. So you can feel free to start with 6,000 and then lower it if you're like dropping frames and your stream is like stuttering and looks like crap. Or if it can handle it, you can try bumping it up to 8,000 after you've done a couple of streams and your computer's doing okay. But a lot about streaming and streaming settings is experimentation. So if you have a couple crappy streams when you first get started, that's completely normal because everyone has different internet speeds and different computer setups. So it's really hard to give you the perfect one for your specific situation. So I'm gonna do CBR, 6,000 kilobits per second, one second keyframe interval. Then I'm gonna use all of these other things right here. So if you just wanna copy them, if you have these settings, then that would be fantastic. But if you don't have this NVIDIA encoder, you can switch it to X264. You're gonna be able to change the rate control to CBR. Same thing for the bit rate. I'll start at 6,000. I'm gonna leave the keyframe interval at zero. CPU usage at very fast, and then I'm gonna have the profile set to main or high. I'll probably set it to high to begin with, and then that'll be your settings for CBR X264. So once you have your output settings set up, honestly, just take a deep breath in and out, because this is probably the most confusing part of the entire video. So if you're still here, you're good to go. We're gonna keep on chugging along. So we're gonna jump to the audio tab at the top, not the one at the side yet, we'll get there. We're gonna go to audio at the top and then click on 320 for all of the audio bit rates to give you the best audio quality, all right? Then we can go to the replay buffer tab and I'm just gonna disable this because I do this in a separate video later in this kick playlist. So go ahead and watch that later, but I'm just gonna disable it and hit apply. And if you guys were wondering why that button was there, well, there you go, but I'll cover that later. So we can move on to the actual audio tab right here. Change your sample rate to 48 channel stereo and this is where you're gonna set up your desktop audio, which is gonna capture all of the audio that comes out of your computer. So that includes your game volume, any music you play through Spotify on like a Chrome browser or whatever, that's gonna be through here. So instead of clicking disabled, I'm gonna choose whatever my audio output is for my computer. I usually go with default and it's gonna use whatever my Windows audio setting is set to default. But if that isn't giving you your audio, you can go and change whatever speaker your music and whatever is coming out of through this little list. So I'm just gonna roll with default, but if you have issues, try experimenting. Then we're gonna go to mic slash auxiliary audio, and we're obviously going to add our microphone. I'm gonna use my microphone, which is the Rode PodMic USB. And I also have all of my streaming gear linked down in the description below at the very bottom. So check that out for recommendations. But I got my desktop audio set up. I got my mic audio set up. And then you can just copy these settings here, but most of them I believe are just on by default, so they should be the same. But one thing, and this usually affects one in a hundred people, if you're having a weird audio issue for whatever reason, try messing with disable Windows audio ducking. I think I just have it on by default, so if you're having this weird audio problem with like ducking and like coming in and out and stuff, then try messing with that. But that's really all you need to do for the audio tab, and check this out. I'm gonna drag this up for a second. But as soon as I hit apply, it's gonna add our audio sources. So I'm gonna hit okay. We're gonna take a quick little tangent. Now you can see that it's picking up my desktop audio, which is Hollow Knight in the background. And whenever I'm talking, it's popping up in my mic audio, right? So that's cool. And you can adjust the volume with these little sliders. So if one is louder than the other, you can adjust properly. And if you notice the webcam overlay also has like a audio bar, but there's no like volume coming out of it. So if you wanted to hide it, you could click these little dots and then click hide. So that way you don't have to see it. 
But what you could also do is if you don't want to mess with that and you're worried it might mess something up, you can click unhide all with these little dots here, just drag it all the way down. But I mean, it's not going to make any audio anyways, so it's really personal preference. But we can click these little gear icons here for the advanced audio properties. And you remember how I said that all of our kick audio is coming through track one. So we just have by default, our mic volume and our desktop audio is set to all tracks, which is fine. We just have to make sure that everything we want our kick stream to hear will be enabled on track one. So desktop audio, track one, fantastic, they can hear it. And then mic slash aux, track one, they can hear it. Fantastic, that's perfect. That's all we gotta worry about. So that's the little clarification on that. So we can hit close. We're gonna go back to the settings now that our audio is good, click settings. We're gonna go back to the audio tab. Just kidding, we're moving on to video. We're cruising through this. The base canvas resolution is going to be the size of the monitor that you're playing on. So I'm playing on a 1080p monitor. So therefore it's gonna be 1080p. The output scaled resolution is the resolution you wanna stream at. So I wanna stream at 1080p, 60 frames per second. So my output is going to be 1080 and then my FPS, which is common FPS values, I'm going to set to 60. So 1080p, 60 frames per second. If you don't think that your computer or internet can handle that quality at 1080p, 60 frames per second, you can also lower it to, let's say, 720p, 60 frames per second. Or you could even drop it down to 30 frames per second. But honestly, I wouldn't go much lower than 720, 30 frames per second. And if you have different resolutions here, like I'm going 1080 to 720, but these don't match, you're gonna have to use a downscale filter. And in that case, use Lanskos because it'll give you the best quality when doing so. Also, I should mention this, that I'm not sure if Kick is doing this anymore, but I believe if you have less than two Kick viewers on average, then they're automatically gonna limit you to 720p. I'm not sure if they're doing that anymore still, but if you're streaming at let's say 1080p, 60 frames per second, and you go to actually watch your kick stream and it's coming out 720, it's likely that is the reason. And you can't control that other than obviously getting more viewers, which you can watch my playlist on how to grow your stream after you watch this video. So I wanna stream at 1080p, 60 frames per second. We're good to go. We're gonna hit apply and move on to the hotkeys tab. Hotkeys are a beautiful quality of life setting, which basically, if you want to set a hotkey for an action, like anytime I press on the letter, I don't know, let's say K, then it will automatically start my stream. And if I want to have a hotkey for stopping the stream, I'll do P, then I can have it like that. However, those are horrible hotkeys to pick because I'm going to be pressing those all the freaking time. So what I'd recommend is if your keyboard has like a number pad on the side of it, I'd recommend using those number pad keys because they are different than the regular number keys, if that makes sense. However, if you are using the number pad as your hotkeys like I do, you're going to want to make sure I believe the num lock has to be on. So make sure to turn the num lock on and then it will work. But if you're using them, and they're not working. Make sure the num lock is turned on. Or if you have a weird keyboard, then make sure it's off. I'm not sure. But num lock on, you can use the number pad if that works for you. But if you don't want to use these hotkeys, and I don't blame you because they can be a little confusing at times, just hit this little clear button and you can clear on both. You can literally scroll for days because there's so many different hotkeys like push to talk, push to mute, uh, hiding things, transitions, switching between your scenes and all that. So if you can feel free to get your hands dirty, I also have a separate video on that later in the playlist. So you can check that out later if you want. So moving on to the accessibility tab, this is if you want to change the colors of different things. I won't really mess with this. This is quality of life stuff. So we can move on to advanced tab. I'm not gonna mess with any of this except one important setting. I'm going to enable dynamically change bitrate to manage congestion. And what this will do, let's say that you're streaming Call of Duty and then your stream is going great, but let's say your significant other starts streaming like a 4K movie through like Netflix, right? And your internet's just like freaking out. I don't have enough bandwidth to run both of these. So what will happen naturally is that your stream will start to stutter and you'll talk like this and you'll, you'll like freak out and stuff, right? So by enabling this setting, what it's going to do is it's going to lower the quality of your stream. So you'll just like have less quality, like it'll be obviously looking worse, but you won't stutter around like that. And it's just going to dynamically change your bit rate. So, you know, lower it when it needs to lower it until your significant other like stop streaming Netflix while you're streaming. And then it'll bring it back up automatically when you have more bandwidth to be able to do so. So that's, I think is a very, very useful setting and I recommend having it on. So make sure to enable that, click apply and then hit okay. So quick little recap, we got our chat on the left-hand side here. 
We got our just chatting scene. We got our gameplay scene. We got our audio correctly set up. Everything's looking good to go. So once you're ready, let's go over to kick real quick. We're gonna go to the top right corner and go to the creator dashboard. And this is gonna be your hub for looking everything related to your stream besides OBS. So if you wanna see how many viewers you have, how many followers, you're gonna look at this creator dashboard here because it'll show up under your activity feed for your followers and subs and all that. But what we wanna do before we actually go live is go to the edit stream info right here, which might be hidden under your quick actions. So we'll click on edit stream info. Then you can change your title to what you're gonna stream. So I'll just say Hollow Knight, change my category to Hollow Knight and then change whatever else you want, like language, mature audiences, because you know, we can get a little saucy sometimes. And then just basically change everything you want. Obviously I can't save and I think it's a glitch because you just need to change the category. I haven't done any changes from my last one. So literally I'll just make a quick change, Hollow Knight. So we can now save it. So our title is now Hollow Knight, category is Hollow Knight. That's a really crappy title. Go watch another one of my videos on how to make good titles, but I'll hit save. And so that's gonna be our stream info when we actually go live. So let's go to OBS and go live. So we're in OBS Studio, we're ready to go. We're gonna hit this start streaming button and then we're gonna look in the bottom right corner. So this is very important. So as you can see, we're streaming 60 frames per second, good. CPU usage only about 2%, that's not bad. We've been live for 10 seconds. This is important right here. So we got about 6,300 kilobits. This is green. That means we're not dropping any frames as indicated by zero. So the settings that we picked out for our computer internet speed are handling it quite well right now. Now, if this is yellow or red, you're gonna wanna go back and lower the bit rate, or you might wanna lower the resolution to like 720, all right? And that's gonna depend on your internet speed and your computer. But let's go over to Kick and see how it looks. So now we're over on Kick. It's running, it looks great. So I'm gonna send a couple messages just to see how our chat looks on the screen. As you can see, there's about a one to two second delay, but that's totally normal. You can't really do much better than that. And it just looks fantastic, right? Now, there's a couple more important things that I wanna show you, like showing your VODs and all that stuff. So let's go over to OBS and end the stream. Let's go to OBS, we're gonna hit stop streaming. Let's go back to kick. So now it says our channel is currently offline, but it still says streaming. That's totally normal. It's gonna be about a minute, give it about a minute or two. Then you can refresh this and it will say stop streaming or just like end it or whatever. It'll say zero because it's not live, but you are not live anymore, right? Even though that says streaming, don't freak out. That's normal. And real quick while we wait for that to load, drop a quick like on this video so other people can find it. And you can check out my new website, which is linked down below. And you can get my free streamers cheat sheet, which will tell you what to do before, during and after your stream to start growing your stream, as well as sign up for my free streaming tips newsletter, or you can check out coaching or my video content review service if I'm still offering it, or my ultimate guide to starting a Twitch channel course. Basically everything you're gonna need streaming related is gonna be on the website as well. So feel free to check it out. But now you can see that my stream has officially ended, we're offline. So what we wanna do now is go to the studio tab, if it's still called studio, there's renaming stuff all the time. We're gonna click on VODs, and then you can see our past broadcast right here. So we can click it and you'll be able to watch it. If we press the little play button, I don't know why I'm saying play instead of play, and you'll be able to watch your past broadcast right Right here you can change the quality on the bottom right corner and boom there you go looking good looking clean and if your stream is having trouble like connecting and disconnecting then you're gonna want to change your encoder and if you're just not being able to stream at all and you got like a black screen or whatever then you'll likely want to go into your settings and then go to stream key and reset your stream key and then copy the new stream key into your OBS settings because that's been known to fix it as well. But now if you wanna learn how to set up your kick alerts or kick donations or kick subs or literally anything related to kick, then continue watching this playlist to the side of me. My name's Cody and I'll see you in the next one.